Hello, I'm Sam from Jessup Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. Not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits purpose perfectly and serves you for as long as possible. Now I'm finally back with my clothes and my shoes and I'm pumped actually to get back into a bit of variety from what I've been wearing recently. Though honestly, I have loved the simplicity of a hyper narrow capsule wardrobe. So maybe I need to make a video about that. One of the things that I've been most curious to get my hands back on is my pair of Harlestones from Crown Northampton. They're probably the most talked about, most asked about, and potentially interesting shoes that I own. Though having said that, I've also had a lot of challenges with the comfort and a ton of blisters from these shoes. But they're also the coolest patina project that I've ever personally attempted, and the inability to wear these comfortably has seemed like such a waste to me. I just wanna put them on, I just wanna wear them. So there I was, my first day with all my clothes and all my shoes back, and I had a reason to choose a pair of shoes to put on because I had something to go to, outing so to speak. And I thought to myself, it's a bit warmer, it's a nice sunny day and the crowns are gonna come out. And after wearing them for a day of walking around town and hanging out, nothing too strenuous, I got home to find out once again that I was covered in blisters. So I'm in a bit of a frustrating situation. I have great shoes that I want to wear that fit into my wardrobe but they give me blisters. I suppose clearly they're not broken in enough yet. So let's talk about it. First of all, a bit of a recap on the details. The style is the Harlestone Hand Stitch Derby. They are off-white veg tan calf leather and they are made in Northampton, UK by Crown Northampton. The materials are veg tan upper, a oak bark counter and stiffener, a cork footbed and a Lacta Hevea sole. The construction is a derby construction with French binding. I chose a size UK7, which is a 26.2 centimeter long shoe, apparently, and the cost was 350 pounds or around about 615 Australian dollars at the time. So a bit of history, I ordered these shoes in August 27th, 2021, and eventually they arrived on my doorstep in early December 2021, or thereabouts. Nearly two years since getting them, and a lot of attempts at wearing them without getting blisters, we're entering into our third summer with the shoes. And I really want to wear them, but what has stopped me so far? Well, the biggest issue with these shoes is that the area around my ankles and heels tends to cause a lot of blisters. And also in weird places like halfway down my ankle on the side, hopefully I've got a photo of that, it basically comes down to a complete lack of padding around the collar and heel area. And it's a very weird and uncomfortable place to get blisters, that sort of side of your foot area. It's not even the back of your heel super weird and super uncomfortable. And that leads us on to today's video. I wanted to do a before summer and after summer pros and cons videos about these shoes to see if over the coming three to six months I can create a more amicable relationship with these shoes and turn them into shoes that I not only want to wear but are also comfortable to wear. So let's start off with some of the pros. To me, one of the biggest pros of a white leather sneaker as a category is the minimalistic style that allows it to be worn with pretty much every style of clothing that you may own. Luckily, for Crown, this sneaker nails the minimalistic style probably more than most white sneakers do out there. Apart from the two little stitches that keep the quarters and the vamp together, the rest of the shoe is extremely sleek, basically like a single piece of leather round and then there's the one down the toe. Very slim looking shoe and it also is covered in a fine line of stitching around the edges. The toe is also very sleek, it's sort of rounded but not too round. Overall, the aesthetic of the shoe is extremely clean, extremely sleek and again very minimalistic. Though I guess the thing that sets it apart is that the leather isn't actually white. It's off-white and unlike other white sneakers out there, it's made from a vegetable tan leather, not chrome tan leather. Now this leather is absolutely one of the other pros of these shoes, being vegetable tan. Not only aligns with ethical and eco-friendly values, but it also achieves a much longer lasting product. Its superior durability stems from the natural tannins that are used in the tanning process which bond deeply with the leather fibers. This results in a material that can withstand years of wear and tear and ultimately outlasts a chrome tan leather which lacks the same level of structural integrity provided by those natural tannins. And there's another thing that I love about this leather. 
patina. Now you'll notice that I put these in storage over winter, mainly because I don't want the leather to be covered in spotting from the rain. And I'm not typically this pedantic with my shoes, but in this case, because they're like a natural veg tan leather, it's my first pair of natural veg tan leathers. And because I want them to stay looking white or at least sort of an off whitey color, I wanted to baby them a little bit, at least a little bit. So I've tried to avoid using them in the rain, though they have been outside in the rain. And then I've cared for them using a clear safari fair product to keep them nice and moisturized and ensure that the leather stays healthy and looks as good as it does. In terms of the color changes, it's hard to remember exactly, but they've absolutely darkened and gone a bit more beige over time. I feel that the sole has also darkened in line with the upper material, which is nice so that they sort of don't look mismatched, like the sole's not whiter or more beige than the upper is now. They actually have sort of yellowed or beiged up at about the same pace. Though for some reason there is one area that hasn't darkened like the rest of it is, and it's where the leather has been rolled over and then stitched and that area is sort of around the edges of the whole thing it's the french binding part and that's more pale than the rest of the upper it's a little bit more like the lace color so it still looks good it still looks cohesive as part of the shoe there are a few scratches along the sides of each shoe and some general scuffing all over but overall in my view the shoes look pretty clean and although they've darkened i don't think that they're exactly patinaed as yet and that's of course due to the cons which we'll talk about in a moment but first of all i do have a sort of midpoint and that is the sole the Lacta FSL is the other very unique component of the Crown Northampton shoes and a component that I get a lot of questions on and rightly so because it's a unique material to Crown. Compared to other rubber soles that I've got experience with, this is a lot softer feeling. It's sort of squishy to the fingers and then underfoot it sort of feels a little bit squishy. But it's only sort of like a mil or maybe two mil of squish, so it's not like walking in a wedge sole or a pair of runners. I'm clearly a bit mid about how I feel about the sole so far and that's mostly because I just don't know how long the softer sole is going to last under a lot of wear. Hopefully I can overcome that, but the cons are getting in the way. So let's get into what those are. Con number one, well, is only one con and it's the comfort, but specifically how the oak bark counter and stiffener have made the shoe so stiff and so, it's just so hard to get comfortable. Now the design on the sides could be a little bit lower to make, you know, there are less chances of blisters, but excluding like an obvious redesign of the shoe, the most obvious thing that I can personally point to that seems to have impacted the way that this shoe is and isn't comfortable seems to be the oak bark counter and the stiffener which is a pain because it's these materials that mean the shoe is going to last basically forever, even if I was able to wear them a lot. Now, the decision to choose these incredibly high quality and lasting materials have meant that there's been no introduction of things like foam or any other padding materials that other sneakers like this have, which although you may think means it will never be comfortable, actually isn't true because if you think about your dress shoes or any other shoes that have a similar type of construction that aren't a sneaker, for example, my loafers which have a very similar makeup in that area but they don't seem to rub and they don't seem to cause blisters because I suppose they're a bit lower and maybe less stiff. I'm not sure. It's clearly a mix of both the materials chosen and the design around the ankle area that has led to me having blisters and I know other people out there have had that same issue too. But the choices to use the materials were actually the right choices. They were designed and made to make the materials last as long as possible. such a conflicting way to feel about a pair of sneakers. And I think that bids the ultimate question. Do I keep trying or do I just buy myself a pair of Koyos, which I know are comfortable and I know are going to last me a fairly long time of very, very high and regular wear. And these pair have yet to experience that, as you can see, although I would love to do so. And that's the question that I hope to answer after the summer of what hopefully isn't too much suffering to get these shoes comfortable. It's a shame that I didn't wear them through winter because thick socks really do help prevent blisters, but ow, these are the things we learn over time. Thanks very much for watching. Links in the description as always, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Cheers.